Welcome back everyone. Now that we have a good understanding on the fundamentals of Storybook, we can start looking at add-ons. Add-ons, as the name indicates, implement extra features for Storybooks to make them more useful. Starting next video, I actually cover all about add-ons and explore quite a few add-ons with version 5.3. However, in version 6, there are a few essential add-ons that Storybook will install for you when you run the init command. And those essential add-ons are exactly what we will learn in this video. As of this recording, there are still quite a few issues open for version 6, so hopefully you will find solutions by the time you start working with add-ons. Anyway, let's get started. The first handy add-on is the background add-on. So in the storybook toolbar, you can see the gallery icon. And if I click on it, I can switch between light and dark backgrounds. Light is light gray. Dark is black. And if you clear it, you have white. This add-on is really useful if you have components with white background. It becomes much easier to test as well. The next add-on is the controls add-on. This add-on basically lets you change the arguments for a story. Or with React, you could say that it lets you dynamically change the props for a component. At the moment, if I click on controls, you can see that it says the story is not configured to handle controls. And that is because our story is not written using the args mechanism. So let's quickly rewrite these stories. Const template is going to receive args and the template is the button component and we spread the args. Success is going to be template dot bind an empty object. Now we say success.args is an object where variant color is green and children is success, which is basically the button text. I'm also going to quickly change the danger story. If I now save this file and go back to storybook, you can see that it still doesn't work as expected. Now this is one of the open issues at the moment. So I'll tell you how to work around for now. So in the default export, we're going to specify our types and we're going to explicitly say variant color is a control, which is a text input. If I now save this file and go back to the browser, you can see that the controls add-on works now. Variant color is green. If I change variant color to purple, the component re-renders right away for us. Similarly, I can also add for children. If I change children text to something long, that also updates in the UI. So this is a really useful add-on to test different scenarios. For example, how does your component wrap long text? So a lot of stress testing can easily be done with this add-on. Now in the ideal scenario, you don't have to specify this arg types in the default export. The args that you specify against each story should automatically work in Storybook. Unfortunately, because of the current issue, we have to specify our types. We have a text control for our example, but there is a color picker for any color or background color props. There is a number control as well, and a few other options to meet your requirements. But that is about the controls add-on. Right next to controls, we see the actions panel. This is for the actions add-on. It lets you log user actions and this add-on works really well with arcs mechanism. 
For example, let's add an on-click handler for the chakra buttons. Back in the stories file, we're going to specify on click action clicked and this is under arg types if i now save this and go back to the browser click on the buttons you can see that the click event is logged in the actions panel so this is more of a way to ensure your events are working fine sometimes you might forget to pass down rest of the props to the component and this is a good way to ensure all the event handlers still work as expected. The next add-on is the docs add-on. What this does is it gives you the code for each of the stories. So if you're working as a team, you might often want to consume components created by other devs. For that, you simply go to the docs add-on and click on show code, copy, and paste it into your editor. You can also see the arcs that the component expects so you'll know what has to be passed as props. The last add-on is the viewport add-on. Now this is supposed to work by default but there is a current existing issue for Windows machine where it doesn't. On Mac though it should work as expected. For Windows I could only get it to work by specifying it in main.js. If it's fixed by the time you're watching, that's awesome. If not, in main.js, you're going to have to add the line at storybook slash add-on hyphen viewport. Since we changed main.js, which is our configuration file, we have to restart storybook. Now what that line does is it adds an icon to your toolbar which lets you select different viewport sizes thus helping you develop and test responsive components. All right, that is a quick overview of the essential add-ons that are shipped by default with version six of Storybook. Over the next six videos, I actually talk a bit more in detail about some of these as well as a few other add-ons, but in the context of version 5 of Storybook. However, I recommend that you watch them to get an idea of what else is possible with Storybook add-ons and it shouldn't take you more than 20 or 30 minutes. I understand mixing version 5 and 6 is not the best but I hope I did a decent job trying to patch version 6 with version 5 content. Please do watch this series till the end of the playlist as I'm sure there are a few topics for you to uncover. Well then, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.